Now, Hindu philosophy <clears throat> believes that the whole universe is in great cycles. This great cycle that goes round and round and round takes millions of years for this cycle to be completed because round and round and round this great cycle is called kalpa. Kalpa. The great cycles of going round and round and round. What happens in these great cycles? Well, one part of the cycle one part of the cycle is Brahman. Which brings about creation. This Brahman is what they refer to as the golden seed. Golden seed or Purusha. out of which creation happens, out of which the universe happens. So the golden seed, Purusha, is Brahman, which brings about this great cycle of creation. It's a tragedy. It should not happen. But this tragedy happens. Brahman, kind of Brahman sort of belches golden seed breaks forth in bringing about the universe. After this creation happens, then you have the cycle of preservation, of preserving the universe now that has been created through this golden seed that bursts forth from Brahman. And this stage of preservation uh, is sustained by Vishnu. Vishnu, the god of preservation, the, the world forces of preservation, of sustaining this great universe that is going on these great cycles of, of, of destruction and of creation and of preservation. So you have the preservation phase. Then you have a third phase, which one of you was asking me about, the phase of Shiva. the Shiva phase, which is the phase of destruction. So these great kapas, Brahman brings it about by the golden seed, by, you could say, burping up the creation, this great universe, it comes to pass. Brahman brings that about, the Brahman forces. But as the Brahman forces bring about the creation, then it must be sustained and preserved. And so the Vishnu forces sustain and preserve the universe. But then, alas and alack, it moves on and goes into a destructive phase where it vanishes completely. And that's the Shiva phase. So the Shiva phase is the destructive phase. You know. And the Hindu philosophers look at the universe in which we live today and they determine which phase we're in. And we're somewhere in the Shiva phase. The, the, the destructive forces are let loose all over the world which they see as a, as a Shiva phase. But it's not just the world that is caught in this. The whole universe is caught in this great cycle of kapha, of creation, of preservation, of destruction, of Brahman, of Vishnu, of Shiva. Brahman, Vishnu, Shiva, those forces which take this great kapha system round and round and round and round and round. For what purpose? ladies and gentlemen, for no purpose whatsoever. It is a horrendous catastrophe that should have never happened that the universe ever came to be. And so Shiva is bringing about his destructive work at dismantling it. But then alas, when it's all dismantled, all at once Brahman brings forth the golden seed, brings forth another great universe 
and we're back in the cycle again, this great Kalpa cycle. What does that happen? What does that have to do with you? Ah, you and me. We are on a mini cycle, on this great cycle, which is called samsara. Samsara. Samsara, which goes round and round and round. And that going round is my soul, my soul, which gets incarnated into a body, and then death comes, and I come off that cycle. Death comes, but alas, I'm still stuck in the cycle. You see? So even death doesn't release me. And so I'm stuck on this cycle of going round and round and round. I can't get off of it. Round and round and round. For what purpose? For no purpose. The goal is to get off this cycle if you can. Find a way to get off of it. And that's the whole fixation of Hindu philosophy. How to get off this cycle of samsara. Going round and round and round and round. Now, by the way, when you die, there is a little pause in the going round and round. That little pause is called paralia. Paralia. A time of repose. It might last for a thousand years. I'm not sure. You know, different philosophers have different ideas how long paralia lasts. But eventually, uh, you, you'll reappear again. Uh, your soul will reappear in another body and you're into the visible form of it. Even when you're in Paralia, you're part of that samsara cycle, but the visible form of it happens then when you are reincarnated in another being, and so you go round and round and round and round and round and round and round. Even a small contribution can make a big difference. Jesus fed 5,000 people because of a little boy's five loaves. Regardless of the amount, your contribution is very important and greatly appreciated. Visit us at tvsseminary.com. How did all of this come to pass, this, this philosophy of Hinduism? Uh, scholars debate that a lot. They talk about it quite a bit. Uh, the perception by most scholars, uh, as, 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 I, as I read them, is that um, about 3,000 years ago, you had Dravidians. Dravidians, who were a dark-skinned uh, people living in India and, uh, and the southern parts of India and so forth. So you had this, these Dravidians. They worshipped the fire. Uh, they had animal sacrifices and so forth. They practiced the kinds of religion that we have talked about when we talked about the African experience. That's the kind of religious story that they had, the kind of religious narratives that, uh, that, that formed their thinking. And then there was invaders came over the Himalaya mountains to the north and moved down into India south of the Himalaya mountains. These invaders were the Aryans. And they were a very aggressive people and they were, uh, they were um, uh, a, a white, a white, white races they were. And so you had the Aryans and the Dravidians intermingling now for many centuries. And a lot of intermarriage took place. Now here I'm very cautious in what I'm saying, and if a Hindu were here with us today, he might say, wait a minute, David, that's pushing it too far, don't say that, that kind of thing. Uh, uh, but uh, it's, it's my judgment, and you take this with a grain of salt, it's my judgment that, uh, that the Aryans were getting concerned about their racial purity uh, as the intermarriages are taking place. And so the Hindu kind of philosophy, which was geared to maintaining the integrity of, ca of caste uh, without any dilution, I think that drive came out of the racism, the racist kind of inclinations of these Aryan, uh, Aryan invaders who wanted to preserve the purity of their Aryan systems. I think so. I think that is what is happening. 
it reminds me somewhat, a lot, of South Africa in the heyday of the racist apartheid system there, where you had the, the white races, and then you had the, uh, the black races, and then you had the, the Indians and the, uh, and, 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 and the color reds, who were a mixture of both. And so you had these four castes developed there in South Africa. Um, and they implemented laws which they claimed were uh, uh, based upon their religion and their faith. Uh, you know, the, the, uh, how in the world they ever got racism in the Bible, I don't know, but they managed to find it there. And so uh, they claimed that they found it there. And so the whole apartheid system in South Africa with its religious connotations was geared to maintaining the racial purity of the, white, of the whites moving into South Africa, I think. And I think that uh, that is probably what is happening here in India back there uh, 3,000 years ago, um, that uh, there was this concern about maintaining the integrity of these different societies that are intermingling. And so the whole Hindu system, the whole Hindu philosophy is geared to maintaining the integrity of the caste system. I think that is what is happening. Actually, the term caste itself, varna, the term varna uh, means color. It has the word that means color. That's the word for caste, color, within the Hindu experience. 